It's sun's time, everybody. Three, two, one, sun! The suns are rising once again for the podcast. I'm sure we've done that joke before. We've done one similar, but not the same. <laughs> hey, guys, would, welcome to this week's podcast. I don't believe that. Episode 17. 17? I thought it was 16. No, no, 17 sounds right. 16 was the one that nobody liked. Just kidding. They all liked it. They liked the every bit of it. You know why they liked it? Because they like us two. Us two meaning me, D Marks. And me, Tom C. Guys, it's the Sons of Idiot time. <laughs> Sons of Idiot. And we're proud to be here. Yeah. Very we're proud. chilling out, relaxing, chillaxing on a nice, a cool summer's eve. A little bit of a storm earlier, but guys, still though, we're, me and D are constantly in peace. Yeah. There's no friction before the friction. And yet you guys insist on starting a war here between us two. Not a war. We're going back to this? No. I'm just saying you guys always want us to be in conflict. Do they want us to be in conflict? Well, you know what they did is they told us... They, they're they asking us to take a, a, a funny word off. Uh, is that... A funny is, word is slash... I feel like he's the cousin of Bernie Madoff. He is. Interesting. But he, he also started the first ever funny word off competition. Hello, my name is Funny Madoff. It's funny nice word to meet off. you. Um, but no... Uh, they're, they're challenged. They want to see who's who's got the chops. Oh, I don't know how I feel about this, guys. No, e- I, you really put me on the spot. It's not my idea. They want to see it. The audience loves funny words. They love funny words. They love funny pronunciations. Yeah, and that's what you get in a funny word off. All right. Well, uh, what are the ground rules? <laughs> ground rules: no cursing. Fair. Fair. Um, no repeating of the same word. Are you allowed to make it sound like you're cursing? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you're allowed to almost repeat the same word, but jokingly. Okay. <laughs> also, you're allowed to say the same word if you spell it differently, but in your head. Okay. That's true. Enough. Okay, here's how you lose. Okay. You lose if you repeat the same word, okay. or if you laugh too much, or if you can't think of something. Well, how long do you have to think about it? You don't have any time to think about it. It's rapid fire. Oh, jeez. That's why it's a funny word off. We can go to the slow funny word off, but that's... I felt like that's, that's what we were going to do. Okay, but... f- you get five seconds. All right. You have five seconds. It will not be timed, but we have a we have a timed right there. Think about it. Yeah, that's true. That's... Five seconds is a long wait, though. Yeah, but they want to see it. The yeah. fans want to see it. I guess. I mean, do we want to just get, get it rolling? <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, also acceptable is funny names. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's pretty obvious. Okay. It's his phrase is all right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but don't go crazy. Okay. <laughs> that's the referee. Don't go crazy. Don't go nuts, guys. You know how it is. They're. We've got some relaxed referees. Do we have a fun referee name? Uh, you know that's the first one. <laughs> Funny referee, Herf Dernan. Herf Dernan's good. Uh, Skip Lip Black. Suds Funzy. Um, Sal McGlow. Good, good. Skip Donahue. Uh, Bo Glogna. <laughs> Jack Schlack. Um. Jim, the deaf guy. Journey Dern Dern. <laughs> uh, Joni McSaint Clairston. Fred Willard. That's not no, Fred Willard. It's pretty <laughs> funny. Um, William T. Godenheimer. Often be Vindras. Uh, the should... smelly referee man. We're moving away from referee and going to funny words, period. Okay, funny words. All right. Let me start? Yeah. Uh, Billy's Ghosts. <laughs> Clonston? Uh, Aspirinator. <laughs> Ragdolls. Uh. That was not good. Spinner 10 T T. Crunch. Uh, Crunch Rimmin. <laughs> this is a close one. Schnurg. Uh. That was very good. I'm on, I'm, I'm on losing points. Was, Wastel. Nunch. I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm losing here. Uh, we, we, wow. He's got me in a corner. Wheelbarrel. <laughs> oh no, I can't compete with that one. <laughs> I submit. <laughs> uh, okay. Guys, we all knew he was going to win, but then he did it. <laughs> Key is I, I really I really took advantage of the enunciation rule. No, you did, but also it was the, it was the look that no one can see. The look of our look our looks against the rules. No, you nailed it. Okay. Uh, mm. He clenched it, guys. He clenched it. 
Now we don't need to do that because now we know who won. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> guys, you want to hear about video games. Let's talk. Yeah. Yeah. Here's let's, the deal, guys. Video games. <laughs> right off the bat, I'm going to hit you with a humdinger. Mm. So we, uh, we've, been, we've been doing the Let's Plays, guys. We've been making them, but here's the deal. We just beat, we've been beating them lately. We're beating them. They're left we're, and right. We're beating them. Somebody games. call the police. We're beating our games. So I want to ask you. I want to ask you about it. Uh, what what game were you proudest of beating? Well, we only beat two so far. I just mean in general. Oh, uh, you beat a lot of games in your time. We're yeah, talking that's about true. Games we beat. That's true. Uh, a lot of games you've worked hard to get there. You know. That's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah. Uh, I got to be honest. A lot of people. Are, this is going to be an unpopular choice, but this isn't obviously my proudest one. But I felt good. Really good beating Bioshock Two with the good ending. It hmm. felt it felt good. Really? Yeah, because like you you're finally free of Rapture and you free Eleanor and like you're you died because you exploded or something. But she like takes I you. Forget on. why you're dead, but you do die because there's an explosion or something. Oh, yes, but she do. takes you on as like a guardian spirit. Yeah, because she believes in what you have to say, and it really is kind of it's a sweet ending. I feel it's a good ending. Yeah, and you were proud that you beat the game. Yeah. Here's the thing. I'm going to tell you this one. Uh, anytime I beat a Metal Gear Solid, there's always something that makes me cry a little. That's because some of them are pretty cry-worthy, especially 4. Dude, in Peace Walker, you're like, oh, and then, like nothing really sad happens, but I'm like, the boss, no. But I felt good about beating it. Yeah, 3 was sad, too. Yeah. Because like in, in Portable Ops, it's like, like when you when you beat that, it's like kind of sad because you're like, no, big boss, you just literally stopped someone from doing this exact thing that you're planning on doing two seconds from now. <laughs> nah, that's what it. Dude, Peace Walker's so good. But you consider, is, is, two is a really sad ending when you think about it. I forget what happens. Because Ryan's, Ryan's world gets totally effed with. Yeah. It's like, oh, everything I know didn't exist, and Rose may or may not be a real thing. Uh, but that really shows in all the Metal Gear games when he's bummed and totally he's like not caring about his life anymore. Yeah, that's pretty true. Because in 4, he doesn't care. He just goes and he fights and he kills people and he gets hurt a lot. Yeah. He's like, I'm half robot now, because whatever. Because something happened. I don't know. That's a good game. Which one, 4? Dude, yeah, I only played it once, so I really should play it again. Dude, let's play. I would. I want to do all of Metal Gear Solid. Solid. But let's go on. Because okay. um, we all feel good about beating RPGs when it happens. Yeah. We'll follow, I don't even... I, I wanted to say in Advance Wars, but I don't know if I ever beat in Advance Wars. I beat... Oh, that's a good point. I beat Advance Wars on... I beat Advance Wars campaign on hard one time. I don't even want to hear that. It was in Dual Strike, which is kind of cheating. No, that's a really good hard game. But I did it, and I nailed it. And... Because I think you were allowed to use all the COs right from the beginning on that one. If you were in hard mode. If you beat it already. Yeah. So that was convenient. That's hardcore. But yeah, I, I did that. Uh, Tom and I aren't really, we don't really need to challenge ourselves with super high difficulties, guys. Usually we don't, yeah. Which is, which is uh, a lot of people are going to look down on us for that. You can suck it. Yeah, because I don't really need, uh, you guys see it in Mass Effect when I'm playing on normal, I get really frustrated. Dude, I, I talk about it in, in the Mass Effect thing, which is actually, we could talk about it right now. Which, now's the time. Now's the time. Because a lot of games you feel good about beating because they, it's specifically in RPGs, you get a lot of grinding and stuff. But a lot of games are artificial lengtheners that are pretending to be difficult. Artificial sweeteners. Artificial bleateners. Mm. Um, but the thing is, like, we played Mass Effect and we beat it. But so much of Mass Effect, uh, the difficulty, air quotes, is that um, it's an artificial difficulty created by, like, something that's irritating or that didn't really make any sense but is done. For instance... We, I complained about it mostly in the fight against the Thorian. Yeah, the, the giant plant monster. That fight's absolutely stupid. Because for no reason, you're fighting it, sort of, but it can magically make a clone of the same thing a million times. And no, it's fight. the worst. It, it, it's the, there, are a lot of games that, there are a lot of games that do this, and it, it bothers me because they're, they're like, well, we can't have this, this boss character die because he's a story element. Then don't make a boss fight. Throw something else in. Yeah. Nothing made me more mad in <clears throat> Mass Effect 3 then when you're on Thessia and you're fighting against the Reapers there, and you get to the first Kai Lang fight, and he's like, I'm such a badass assassin, I'm so grindark. And then you shoot him like a billion times in the face, because he's an assassin who uses a sword in space-time. <laughs> uh, you shoot him a million times in the face, then he does the, I'm gonna jump back, and then there's a helicopter gunship that's gonna attack and no. shine really bright lights so that you can't see me while I recharge my shield. And I'm like... Any other situation, I would shoot down this gunship in two seconds. Yeah. You shot down three, if you completed Kasumi, Stolen Memories, 
in you shot down three of those gunships in in Mass Effect Two. This is a cakewalk for Shepard at this point. Yeah, you, you take that down on time. Yeah. There's always stuff like that. No, and it's it's just bad. No, if you're gonna have a game and you're gonna do something like that, you need to have consistency. Because that fight would have still been difficult if you were able to destroy the the, the thing. No, it wouldn't have. No, it, that's no, 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 that's not, almost the. Mo- you're missing the point. The point is not it, it. Not it wouldn't be it would it would it would be doable and you'd feel good doing it. Yeah, because you, Kylo's it, a it terrible was, character. It would be far easier. Because you have the one part in, um, you have the one part in Metal Gear Solid Two that I think some people might go to now and say like, "Well, what about the fortune fight? You couldn't kill her." I think that's a lot different because it, that's it, an unwinnable fight. It's different. Yeah, because you really feel. I mean, technically, you would consider the light, the Kai Lang fight unwinnable. Mm. Um, I, I don't know. I, haven't, I don't know what that fight is. I haven't. Really yeah, well, well, we we might get to it, guys. But the point is, like, I feel like there was a lot of pressure in that fight because you're like. Uh, I literally can't do anything, and she's going to rock my mouth out yeah. with this with this rail gun here. And it's cool. Yeah. Well, that a lot of people probably died there a million times, but that's not artificial difficulty. No. That's literally a story-related unwinnable fight. Yeah. Which is fine, because it makes sense in the story, and it's awesome. Then it super makes sense in the story, and it's also awesome. Yeah, there's a whole lot of, whole lot of stuff working behind the scenes. Two is a great game. But anyway, um, I'm just saying, that's dumb. Yeah, it's real stupid. Because you'd definitely be able to... Yeah, there's definitely that all the time, though. Yeah, because... And why? Because they got to lengthen stuff. I no, mean, no, 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 but that, they don't have to lengthen stuff. No, but it's it's like the... It's cheap It's like an is. Eagle Raptor set in uh, sequelitis for Castlevania. Yeah, watch those guys. Yeah, they're, they're really good. They're really good. Um, He was talking about how games, like, they purposely lengthen stuff because they want to make you feel like you're getting your money's worth. Yeah, but... Some things are just frustrating on purpose, and I hate that. Yeah, and that's a lot. That's a lot of what you see in modern games. Yeah, that's def- way more done now than it was back then. There's definitely a lot of stuff in there, and that's all there is to it. Not that there wasn't frustrating or BS things back then, but now you have things that the game just breaking its own rules for the purpose of making it annoying. Yeah, that's always the, that's always the worst. Boy, do I hate that. Anyway, um, so we beat Mass Effect, and we're happy about it. Yeah, we're pretty excited. We're gonna start two eventually. <laughs> yeah, the thing is. A lot of people complain, saying, oh, you guys uh, don't have the, uh, you, you're you not given the passion. And I'm telling you why we're not given the passion, because irritating moments like that. Yeah, it just, it just wasn't, it just wasn't fun. I don't know what the problem is. But we, we have, we, we ramp it back up later, but. It, I do, ha- I do know what the problem is also. I had to use a keyboard. I can't believe you're such. I hate it so bad. Let's talk about it. You can't seem to deal with the keyboard. No, it's because I'm in this, this, this. Couch area. Couchal region. With a keyboard and mouse. Yeah, it's just not comfortable. Okay, it's not great. I'll tell you that. It's not something that I enjoy. I just, I just, I just don't like it. Uh, like I never have had any problems, uh, and, and all of the problems that I complained about in the Mass Effect Let's Play for a computer, I feel like I never had when I was playing the the 360 version. Well, here's a question. Um, it's a little off topic, and we're gonna move on. What's your favorite controller of all time? Probably the PS2 controller. Really. You can't beat that. It's classic all around. There's nothing wrong with it. It excels in every area. The D-pad's great, unless you get one of those knockoffs where all the but all the D-pad buttons are on the same uh, piece of plastic. Yeah, you don't want that. But That's how in- the Xbox one works. Yeah, but there are individual inputs in the original ones. You've got the uh, their analog sticks, which I've always liked on PlayStation, and you have the two uh, shoulder buttons. I just feel like it's it's the best one. Uh, well, the thing is, it's superior to the PS3 one. We can all agree on that. Uh, Dude, you know PS2 one's better than PS3 one. Simple reason of uh, the R2 buttons are weird. Uh, see, I don't mind the R2 buttons. R2 and L2, sorry. The uh, twos. The, the, they're calling them the marshmallows, guys. Is that what they're calling them? Yeah. Uh, I, like the, I like it because you can really... You, for sometimes you can actually like input the uh, force, the amount of pressure you're putting yeah. on it, and that'll change like... But you can do that on an Xbox One, I think. Yeah, but you couldn't really do that in the... Uh... No, it's, it's a step up in that regard, but the thing is I hate that weird direction of the trigger like a 360 is a trigger yeah but the ps3 one's like uh this you know a, a different shape uh, i mean it's, it's, it's not no it's not a trigger but it's for the, the most part they don't use trigger. it for a sh- for the most part that's not your shooting button which is weird because in because in, here's the deal when i played uh fallout 3 for ps3 that brief time sorry yeah. uh it, it they changed the shooting button to the r1 and l1 that's because it feels more like a it feels more like a trigger because it's more I don't know. I thought that was weird. Why can't they just make the trigger buttons triggers? Because they're called trigger buttons. Because they're not called trigger buttons. And they're called marshmallows. Yeah. Well, there are uh, L one and R one or L two and R two. Dude, but that's where the triggers go. I don't know what to tell you, dude. I don't know. A lot of people would say that the GameCube controller is the best. Game controller is good. 
That's that's a pretty good one. Cause people like people like the marshmallows there. Yeah, here's the, my only, here's always been my biggest problem about the GameCube controller for me. I don't like the placement of the X and Y buttons. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah, they're kind of it's weird. I feel like the, the uh, X button in particular. That's that's the, that's the side on the right. one. X okay, on the right. yeah, yeah that that one I always uh, had a little bit of it just wasn't didn't feel right. Um, but no, it, it's a solid controller all around. I felt like. Maybe the C stick was a little weird too. Sometimes it, it's it's I, I'm I'm okay with it. It may have been a little too small, yeah, to be comfortable, but it's not uncomfortable. But yeah, it's the same hand position you'd be in for a 360. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Well, yeah, actually, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's pretty good. Um, I don't know what I would say. I actually really do like the 360 controller a lot. If They'd fix that F and D pad. The D pad's just terrible. Let's let's look at one right now. <laughs> uh, Get away all these bags of stuff. There's a lot of stuff here, surprisingly. Hey, I have a GameCube controller here too. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah. So here's what you got. You get, or we got your 360 controllers right here. Right. Uh, you got. Sorry. I like the. Take that out. Yeah. It's very so, very similar, guys. We're looking at it right now. It's very similar. Yeah. Dude, actually, uh, relating to this. I'm actually just selling my Dreamcast now, but I got re uh, re familiar with the controller of that. Isn't that terrible? It's really not great, and I'll tell you why. Because the because the cord comes from the bottom. Cord comes from the bottom, guys. Yeah. I know this is such a dumb thing to talk about, but you guys don't really understand how incredibly irritating that is. No, it's incredibly irritating. One thing, it it uh, basically I can't believe no one thought of that. It shortens the cord length. It shortens the cord length. No, I can't believe anyone ever approved it. Yeah. The, like you test it, you test it one time, and you're like, oh, that's obviously annoying. Oh, it's falling falling forward weird. I don't know what the problem. Oh, is. I, I can't lay this controller down comfortably. That sucks. But like a lot of the things there inspired the original Xbox controller, I think. Uh, Which you may not uh, may not believe, but it's true. Maybe because it's it, size definitely. It's size. The triggers sort of. So I don't know if it's much. Uh, one thing I always liked about the Dreamcast controllers was the VMU slot. Yeah. Yeah, that's really neat. Yeah. Um. But it's weird that we got in a controller chat, but I kind of like it. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think it's it has to do with gaming. How, how do you feel about the... Uh, what's your take on the Wii controller? I was about to say that that's actually probably one of my favorites. It's good. There's... there's... Here's the deal, guys. Because you're because com- it's comfortable, yeah. You're holding it two hands, whatever. But the thing is, you don't, you, don't have to, you don't have to put your hands in a definite position. No, I like that a lot. You can kind of um, like just relax them at your sides, because usually it's long enough. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You sometimes you have to point at the screen. Not every game you have to point at the screen. Yeah, I think it really... It, oddly enough, it really... I feel like as a controller, it excels the most when you don't have to use the motion controller because you really can just let your hands kind of... really relax. Like, relax, you're playing yeah. like an Animal Crossing. You just chill out with it. Yeah. I really enjoy it a lot. They they nailed it. Yeah, it's a, it's a quality. Unless you're doing, like, the sideways one for, like, classic games. I don't care for that. Uh, It's a little weird, yeah. I don't know, I don't know whose idea that was. You'd use a GameCube controller for that. Um, I do like the idea, though. Dude, a lot of people lately have been sassing on the 64 controller. Oh, I would definitely sass on that. I don't know if I have one right here. I do have one right here. Because so- I feel like you have... Because here, l- let me let me take a look-see here. Because we have every controller right here. Because the, the thing about the 64 controller I've always felt with, uh, I felt like I've had to change positions. But you've ne- there's never a game alive where you had to change the position mid-game. I feel like I've had to, though. I feel like there's been... Because, like, your natural inclination is the two hands out on the outer wings and having kind of like a bird's beak pointing at your crotch. Well, that's that's how you know you're not a Season 64 player. Because Season 64 players knows your your initial hand position is the... The analog stick and the and the button. But I feel like this is the more this is where my hands naturally want to go. It's not. It doesn't have anything to do with experience. Maybe a little too close. You're talking about natural. Uh, natural right. hand. This feels good on my hands right yeah. here. Because that's like. Because that's why every other like controller in the history of mankind didn't have this weird phallic, you know, stick here. Don't say phallic. That's going the easy way out. <laughs> Because because it, it essentially, if you had the two outer wings, it's like an accelerated Super Nintendo controller. Yeah. Which is great. We all love the Super Nintendo controller. But also then a joystick. And also a joystick. Yeah. The key about the 64 controller was that it was versatile. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> However, they, they figured out how to compact it later. That's all there is to it. Yeah, but you you got to admit, this is a clumsy design. That's all there is to it. Uh, I think they... Here's the deal. I, I always thought it was pretty comfortable to hold. You're, like, you're not uncomfortable like that, you know? You're playing your games, whatever. 
It always it, everything's always right where you need it. You're never reaching, but also this is not uncomfortable. And the thing is, at the time, it was they, the only with the trigger. That's true. They did have a trigger. Yeah. The thing is, at the time, they didn't know what they were gonna expect. Yeah. They didn't know analog stick could be the way it would go. Also, it's a pretty bad analog stick. I was <laughs> actually I, I kind of like the analog stick. It's it's kind it's of rough. That's all there's to it. But. It's a little too springy. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah, you, you had this terrible D-pad, which is no good. I was going to actually bring up the uh, SNES controller as being a good one, too. I, I was going to, too, but if, if you like that one, there's no reason you wouldn't like this. It's because it has that extra joystick in the middle. Like, it, now, like looking back, nowadays, you know that's clumsy design. I, I, think, I think it was um, a sort of future-proof design. Uh, it was made because they didn't know what was going to happen. They didn't stick with the design, obviously. No, and I feel like... But how would they know? Because they were coming from a time when you only had 2D games. Yeah, but that's like saying, you know, the Model T was was a great car all the time because it was one of the first cars. Yeah, it revolutionized the whole thing. It doesn't make it a particularly great car by today's standards. <sighs> um, that's, where I'm, that's where I'm going you, with it. You, okay, here's what you're doing. is You're doing something that I always say I should do, which is... Not look back with nostalgia goggles and treat it as though it's right now. Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do that too because that's that's who I am. It's a clumsy design. If this came out today, right? Right. As the next controller for Nintendo. Yeah. Um. People would be weirded out. Cause cause y- your hands are naturally going in that uh, on the two outer wings position. No, this is this actually isn't the the standard position, guys. The analog position. It's actually a, I I don't think I have bigger hands. But this is sort of uh, un- almost uncomfortable. Yeah, because it's kind of you kind of have your knuckles right against one of the things there. Eh, if this were not today, it would be mocked straight up. Yeah, but I've always I've I've always liked this one because it's red. Well, obviously, uh, reds reds obviously work better. And I like I like the bigness of it, the scabig nose of it, you know. Yeah, but there's a lot of space that's just not being used. And that's true, but I also like that it's light. However, then you move up to this 360 controller. And it's comfortable all around. Yeah, you know, you you ne- you're never you're never ew, dude. What? It's got like big league chew on it. Ew. Someone's been eating a donut on my controller. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but you said the Super Nintendo controller. Yeah, Super Nintendo's because I, I don't know if I have one here for that. The only the only thing, honestly, which is going to be weird, thing I would probably change most about the Super Nintendo is that it doesn't have those Boom. water wings. See, but the water wings are key. Look at this one; I had a sticker on it before. Nice. It was a young man. Like you, that you kind of—I feel like you kind of need it. See, that's what I was saying because that because the Nintendo sixty four one's like an accelerated. The, stin, the Stintendo. The stun. The stun Dundo forty two. Yeah. Like a, but this this is a. T- it's not sticky or anything. Yeah. But just, just yeah. But I feel like you need those. You need those water wings there, to kind of you know. But we didn't back then. I'll tell you what. Maybe yeah. now that we have larger hands. Yeah, we have we have regular. Because it was made for children by Japanese men, so they, you know, yeah, true. They didn't know that we'd uh, they'd have giants holding these controllers. Yeah, it is small. Um, but what would get uncomfortable doing this? If you had I feel to use, like if, just the the craning, because all the support is coming from your index fingers as opposed to coming from the palms of your hands. I mean, you don't always hold it like this. You probably hold it like this. Still, but all the support's still coming from your index fingers. Yeah, but no one really ever got uncomfortable because it's so light. True, but it's still gripping anything for a long period of time. That's a classic controller. We don't even need to talk about this regular Nintendo controller. No. That's, that's a no one's top controller list. Yeah. But here's the deal. How about um, how about we talk briefly... Briefly. ...about um, handhelds, but mostly control and handhelds. Specifically... Yeah, you got something in mind. ...how irritating um, iPhone controls are for uh, handheld games on iPhone. I don't know if you've ever played any. Uh, I have not. I'm not where I've needed the... Thing. So what happens Cause, is, cause here's what, here's, it's pretty obviously flawed. Yeah. Here's what I like, uh, for obvious reasons. Game Boy Advance, that was a really solid layout for a Game portable. Boy Advance was pro. Yeah, that was a solid layout for a, for a portable. It may have system. had not enough buttons, is my only... Because um, you had your two shelf buttons, your top shelf. I'll call them shoulders. Shoulder buttons. Then you had your A and your B. Yeah. And then you did the D-pad. Start and select, yeah. That's yeah. It. Yeah, I think, and you know, that could play Pokemon. What else do you need, guys? But then they moved down to the DS, which you can all agree is less comfortable to hold in general. But that's still the same amount of buttons. Yeah, uh, I'm, not, I'm not. No, it's not. No, they had something in between there. They had the uh, foldy one. No, they've, they've straight up uh, A, B, Y, and X again. I think what, so. What system am I thinking of? I'm not thinking of the DS. I'm thinking of uh, uh, Game Boy SP. 
which is the thinking, foldy one. Yeah. Which is still a good uh, concept, but it wasn't like a... a yeah, a, it wasn't an official release. Well, no, it wasn't a, a, a step up. It wasn't next generation. Yeah, that's what, I, that's what I meant. But the folding ones are clearly less comfortable. How do you know it still gets the... It, basically the same thing as a uh, Game Boy Advance. The uh, PSP is basically the same. Yeah, more buttons and stuff. And that's, that's really the, the height of comfort and prettiness for a handheld. I love my, my uh Did you PSP. ever have uh, Game Gear? No. I knew, I knew someone who had it. I recall it being very similar to the Game Boy Advance. Maybe I'm remembering it wrong. Well, but they had backlights, which I don't know why everyone didn't have immediately. Well, I think it had that same like screen in the middle, yeah, controls on either side uh, deal. And I played Sonic, so that's all you need. Yeah. But no, that was a great choice. I think if you got the Supa Boy, that's yeah. basically a, a giant DS. That's really well, f- not a DS, but a giant. Yes. It's kind of Game Boy Advance that plays uh, Super it, NES game. I, I'm, I'm shying away from Advance because it has four buttons on the front. Yeah. Because it's a Game Boy Advance. I think, but the thing is, I'm going back to this because I have a Vendetta. Because you play a game like, uh, I'm talking about the iPhone, guys. Because they have Secret of Mana for the uh, iPhone. It's so, it Tom's sucks, favorite game, Mana. Socks, socks, giant bulls. Socks, bulls. Because what happens is... It's a rare you're looking at baseball the sc- versus basketball match. Socks <laughs> versus bulls. <laughs> you're looking at the screen, right? Right. Uh, the picture's on the screen. So you have to put your fingers right on the screen and touch the buttons on the screen. No, it's just not, it's just not what it was made for. No, because you have to look underneath your thumbs for stuff. Yeah. You're like, oops, did I put that gold piece under there? Guys, you sell me a, a, a an iPhone controller sideways deal, I'll buy it. Dude, they have. Remember you, the um. You're saying it's stupid, but still. Remember the um the peripheral where you like plug in an iPad and it's like a rifle that attaches to the bottom of it, and like you play shooting games. You play laser tag. Yeah, yeah, that's really cool. Well, laser tag. I I wasn't talking about that. No, I'm talking about something else. So they have a Toys R Us, I think. Uh, I was talking about the one they had. I think they had them at Walmart. Well, I don't know. Anyway, guys. Uh, uh, I, but that's, that's a, we, I think we nailed that one. Yeah, it was great. That was really fluid. Knocked it right out of the park, guys. Great job, everybody. Talk about video games for once. So we'll hit you after this bake. Or ba- a bake. We'll, we're going to take a bake. We'll bake. See you ba- bake. Welcome back. A little too soft. Give me, give me another taste. Hey guys, welcome back. I want you to give me more lift on the end. Hey guys, welcome back. Oh, <laughs> guys, welcome back. That's chef. Welcome back. Anyway, what guys. do you want for me? What? How much do you want me to do? I already, I already nailed it. But we should. But we're kind of a team. Uh, I mean, you, you, you were teaming that last. Uh, but I'm not the, there because you told. You had guided my efforts, and then I made it in gold. Yeah, that's true, but I feel like we should both have gold. We, both, we do both have gold. When I do well, you do well. Everyone knows it. That's true. We're one, we're one entity. Yeah. But I feel... With some, okay, but next time you got to give me the... Fair enough. I mean, come on. Fair enough. Is it fair enough? Yeah, that's why I said it. And then I really enunciated it, too. Um, enunciated. I don't know if I would say enunciated. Oh, that's too late. Are we going to have a, a funny pronouncing of words? No. Contest? You would lose that too. I would lose that too. You got you got nothing on me, bruh. I really don't. Um, don't at all. So we're going to talk about video games? Yeah, I think that'd be fair. Or are we doing a joke? Uh, I think we'll just go around the video games. Do I do a quick joke like we know? Yeah, that's a good one. You start off. <sighs> that's funny. Um, let's say jokes. Jokes. Uh, my sex life. That's good. <laughs> Thank you. A plus. You got one? Uh, so, uh... I would have said Tom C's sex life. That's good. That wasn't <laughs> going to be that harsh. Well, thank you. Uh, so, a uh, zoologist is doing a study in uh, Australia, and he looks, guys. looks out and he says, look at all those joeys, and one of them says, my name's Steve. That's pretty good. Thank you. Thank you. That's pro- it's probably the best joke I've ever heard. I appreciate that. I know that's I know that seems crazy, but it's probably the best. You joke guys, he's laughing on the inside. Joke I've ever heard. Yeah. No, but I, I mean it on the inside. Mm. Mm. So listen, let's let's talk about this. Okay. So is the only reason you hate the keyboard because you had to play on the couch? 
Uh, do you do? I feel like I like shooters with a controller. A lot of people wouldn't agree with you on that. A lot of people wouldn't, but a lot of people aren't me. Question two: How many shooters do you really play? Are I, you? You're, would you consider yourself a hardcore shooter player? I play a lot of shooters. That's all there's to it. That's all there's to it. That's all there's to it. I don't know if, I, but I don't think you're a hardcore guy. Uh, I would never play a Metal Gear Solid on a keyboard. That would suck a, a million dills. Dill well, leaves. Dill leaves. Dill leaves. The thing about that is... That'd be awful. Well, that's one of the things I'm going to talk about real quick, because now I think about it. Because I'm excited for um, Dark Souls on PC. It's coming out. Oh, really? When's that coming out? I don't know, but man, am I going to be pumped about it. The thing is, I don't know how long ports take. Why do ports take any time? I don't know. All games are, are programmed on PC, but I guess they optimize. And anyway, the point is... Um, who would play that with a keyboard? You know, dude. You know if people. You know if the if they released Metal Gear Solid Four as a PC port, people would play it. Yeah, but I feel like it's uh, here's the deal, guys. I play a few games with a PC and control and uh, keyboard. Sorry, but some games you need controllers for. Yeah, that's all there's to it. Yeah, I would never ever play a Dark Souls with a keyboard. I'd never play a Metal Gear game with a with a keyboard. Yeah, some games are just better for it. I mean, that's why I have these controllers. Thing is, all the time we get comments like, "You guys playing a uh, playing Battlefield for 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 360?" I'm like, "No." And they be like, "Good," because like they all everyone who's on YouTube wants you to. I want to do it would be a lot cooler if you did, it, but I did it wrong. Yeah. Um, but um, like a lot of people are like, "Why don't you guys play on PC?" We're always playing on PC. Yeah, we we play on PC a lot, guys. There's one let's play we did where we didn't. Yeah. And bleh. but like. And I wouldn't have done that on PC either. I would have maybe. I've no. But a lot, Shoot, uh, first person shooters are meant for controllers. No, no one would agree with you on that. Meant for controllers. Because here's the deal about that: it's different from a game where you're uh, constantly controlling the camera and stuff. Like a third person, third person game, it, it makes sense to have two analog sticks, right? Right. First person shooter, you're controlling one thing. You're controlling a field of vision, yeah. But uh, if you were controlling it with a with a PC, you're just doing that with the mouse, and that's fine. Okay. If you're controlling it with a controller, you have to use two things. But you're really only looking around with the... Really, you're only using... Your, for, like, a, a Black Ops sort Actually, of that deal. was a bad example I made, because you're using the left analog stick. Yeah, you're using the right analog stick to look, and you're using the left analog stick to move. It's, uh, but the thing is... Okay, I'm going to go away from the position I just made, because it was wrong. Because I admit that. But it's less... People are going to tell you it's less precise. I don't care. I'm still very good at shooting things in a controller. Hmm. I'm still very, very capable of shooting. Now, them. what do you, what do you credit that? How do you, what do you think that's from? Uh, I just think. Think it, years of experience. I think it's just not as imprecise as everyone wants me to think it is. I think you're right about that. Because I think everyone's like, well, your thumbs aren't as uh, they can't be precise because they're thumbs. No fine motor skills are coming from the thumb area. And that's that's a point you hear a lot, and it's wrong. Yeah, it's not exactly that point, but the point of that is less precise. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense to me. It, well, I could understand that you'd have a higher level of precision with a mouse, yeah. But you guys see me making crazy shots in, in New Vegas. Uh, yeah, you see me make crazy shots, too. We both make crazy shots. That's all controller. Yeah. It's because it's more comfortable. We all know that it's more comfortable. No, because the thing of Let's it is... Let's the crap. The thing of it is, I feel <coughs> like the hands... Button. No. I feel like the hands want to be in a controlling uh, hand position as opposed to a widespread keyboarding position controllers didn't get this far and, and, and they didn't they got they're here for a long time they're not bad anymore yeah I, if they were bad they're not at all i i i don't i doubt that mr nintendo the founder of the nintendo Jimmy company, nintendo yeah i mean nintendo yeah i doubt he was like you know what you know what this needs a full-on keyboard and mouse interface no i'm not saying there's anything wrong with keyboard uh, with you might be a little imprecise jumping over those barrels if you have to deal with a, a d-pad yeah so use the mouse. Guys, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that uh, PC gaming is, is, is inferior or anything, because I believe it is the ultimate gaming platform. However, when if I get people claiming, like, PC is better because you get keyboard and mouse, no. That's no, stupid. That's, that's dumb. That's not the selling point of a PC. Because, yeah, here's what you get, okay? You do get, very, you get high precision, but no one's using this level of precision. Two, you get more buttons. That there's no question about yeah, but I feel like I don't need as many buttons, especially in a Call of Duty scenario. I don't need any. I don't need half those buttons. You may never know when you need to. Because you got because you got your quick, you got your change button, you got your knife button, you got your oh, excuse me, you got your crouch button. It's all designed because all of those games are designed to be played on a key on a controller. Well, that's because uh, humans have a limited number of fingers. 
Yeah. However, control is the only like three. And it makes it more and it makes it more uh precise and compact. It makes the control scheme a little tighter, I would say. <clears throat> yeah. And it get, cause like Because you're right. I know what you're gonna say and you're right. Because compare a battlefield Great game to a modern warfare or black ops. <coughs> okay. Battlefield or in Battlefield Two, those are games that are designed originally for the for the computer. Yeah. So they're only lot- on the computer. Yeah. Except for three, but you know. Well, yeah, you said Battlefield and Battlefield 2. Oh, well, sure. Um, you have a lot more stuff because you have like your auxiliary gear, you have all that crap. Right. And, and you know, that's all related to the like hotkeys and stuff. Yeah. But in a uh, Modern Warfare or Black Ops, yeah, you got gear occasionally, but it's all directed to the well, The thing about that is you only get two, uh, usually only get two pieces of, of shootable equipment. Yeah. And then you get uh, usually equipment to the D pad. Yeah. But in a PC game, you could have more than one. Because people, that's why people hate Duke Nukem, not the only reason. People didn't like it because um, it kind of went away from its PC roots, and they can only hold two weapons at a time, which is a very controller console esque yeah. thing. And that makes sense. But the thing about that is, um, there's a lot of games where you have a lot of options, but that makes the game a little. It doesn't make the game better, it makes it potentially uh, have less flow. And more uh, contrived things. Ask, okay, here's ask yourself. Please ask me this question. Would you... The game Deus Ex Human Revolution. I've heard of it. You've played it also. I, I, need, you to, I need you to play it for this, this question. Okay, I have played it. Uh, I've definitely actually played it, guys. Good. Uh, keyboard or controller? What would you play that on? Controller. That's yeah. what I did play it on. Exactly. Because, uh, yeah, some, some people might say, we have, that's a game where you have a lot of options. That's true. Because you got all your implants... You got all your augments. You got a, a ton of weapons. You don't just have the two that you're normally relegated to. Yeah. But you'd still play it on a controller because... Actually, I actually really like this conversation we're doing a lot. You'd still play it on a controller because it's still... It's just more comfortable that way. Yeah. And I'm, t- I'm just I'm just tired of it. Because everyone's acting... Because PC gamers are very elitist. We all know it. No, it's, it's ridiculous. Um, and it's fair. It's fair. They spend a lot of money. They have to try and make themselves feel good about themselves. Even though uh, they're being held back by consoles entirely. Which is like seven-year-old hardware. But you do have the best experience because you have all this other stuff. But the controller is not is not the worst part. No, it's not the selling point. That's no. not. We all know keyboard and mouse are fine. They're fine. But you have to sit at a desk like a doofus. Yeah. Although you don't, because that's not what we do, and it's the best of both worlds. But it's uncomfortable when you have to use when you have to use the keyboard <clears throat> and mouse. As you've seen in, in his mouse. Away from the away from a desk desk area. Like, some PC games force you to use the c- keyboard and Which mouse. Which is ridiculous. And don't get me wrong, I wouldn't use it for everything either. Because I wouldn't use a controller for... We already talked about that. But anyway. But the thing is... Because you're saying in Bioshock 2 they won't let you use a controller. For no good reason. For no good reason. They're like, well, it's not the best way to do it. It sure Why? is. I did it in one. It worked great and I loved it. Yeah. Loved it. Guys, that's... Because you, you have a PC, right? It's great. But because you're a PC, you can do whatever you want. Yeah. You you can have controllers now. No, now that have... should that should be that should be a selling point of PCs. Is that oh you can use controllers? Yeah, you can do whatever you want. If you because re- you just if, toss that on there, guys. If that's what you're comfortable with, you can use it. Yeah, like I'm so tempted. To it's go- adaptable. Yeah, that's the key about it. I'm so tempted with Battlefield Three, even though it's a heavy, it's a it's, that's a PC game that I'm playing it. Yeah, I'm, I always want to go to the controller for something because I like leaning back. Yeah, I don't want to be up there like this. Like I'm at my desk. No, at work. you don't. Need, you're you're in a war zone. You're on a command module. Yeah, except if you're a commander in two, which was awesome. And they got rid of that. Yeah, that sucked. F that. We don't have to talk about this all time, but I thought that was good. Um, I think I heard that there's three more DLCs coming out for Battlefield Three that I'm extremely pumped about. I did not hear that. No, it's very exciting. No, I think I heard that premium guys. Suck. They're releasing a new uh, Steel Battalion game for. I think I did heard that too. Yeah. Did heard that. Did heard that. Oh, but, like, man. I think, like, you can use the Connect to, like, interact with buttons on the screen. I think I heard I don't that. hate that as much no, as I, I thought like I would. No, I like it. I really do. <laughs> I want to Guys, for those it. of you who don't know, Steel Battalion is is a uh, Armored Core-style mecha game. So they only play Steel Panther music. Giant, yeah, giant robots and whatnot. But uh, the original came with a $200 peripheral controller, which... Back in the day, was a ridiculous thing that no nobody... no one would ever own that. But now, also, uh, it because like you know, you're saying, well, the Connect is 150 dollars. That's not that unreasonable. You could only play Steel Battalion with it. Yeah, it was made for Steel Battalion. It was awesome. You play it had particular buttons play, for everything. You play Steel Battalion on the Steel Battalion controller because like it, it's it, not like a Street Fighter Xbox controller <coughs> where you have Ryu blasting a Hadouken. No, but like you can that. still play Tekken if you so choose. No. No, it's a steel battalion. It was for steel battalion. It was awesome. Yeah. If you guys don't know about that, that wasn't that long ago. 
But anyway, that game was sweet, and anyone who played it was awesome. I never had it, but I wanted to buy it. Guys, the giant robot uh, genre is free to get more games, as far as I'm concerned. Dude, I don't know if the, uh, the That's a great genre. Gundam game that I want to come out is out yet. I, I don't. I've never known much about it, but it because it's only for it's only coming out on PS on the PS. It's like free. I heard. Yeah, it's free or like ten bucks or something like that. Yeah, I don't, I need to look that up, but that'd be awesome. Yeah. But anyway, guys, I don't know. That's great. It's exciting. I'm really excited about that. Guys, we never we never talked about I never talked about the Battlefield uh, DLC in here, but I'm just gonna talk about it briefly because I talked about you with the thing. Like, well, you didn't talk about any of the new stuff. I know about the ones that came out. Guys, okay, so I'm a big Battlefield player. I'm not the greatest, but I, I do love it. I've been way into it lately. I've been way back into it. If you want to know what we're playing, that's what I'm playing, bro. That's what I'm playing, Bruh. Anyway, here's why I'm excited because the next DLC, Armored Kill, I think it is. Armored Kill. They all fun names. Um, it's the third of five. It's coming out in September. Guys, I don't care about anything else. It's the largest maps ever. There's AC 130s in it. That's right. Yeah, Guys, I do remember you telling me about this. That's the coolest thing in the history of the world. Was uh, was Operation Heartland, was that an official? Uh, I don't think it was called that. You know what I'm talking about, though. You're talking about that sweet one that was in Pennsylvania? That map? I don't think it was in Pennsylvania. It was. That's right. It was close to us. Really? Yeah, it's like in Lancaster. Crazy. What was that map called? It was a map with the silos and the farms. It was really cool. Yeah. That was a great didn't map. That, didn't it have A-10s there, too? No, but that that uh, that was... Uh, that was... Uh, yeah, that that map pack had it. Yeah, was that map pack official? Is what I'm asking. They're all official. Yeah. Okay. That, that was uh, Armored Fury. Yeah, Armored Fury. That's what it was the, called. Yeah, uh, the other one that they released was Spec Forces or Spec Ops or whatever it's called, Special Forces. Yeah. That was it. Um, no, uh, Battlefield's always had great DLCs. I really liked the Battlefield games. The only reason I the only reason I ever really played it because I never had a computer that could run it. <laughs> well, you briefly did. Yeah, but I but it, it was barely though. It was fun, though. Those games are excellent, guys. You, I don't want to hear any people be like, Ooh, Modern Warfare. We all know that the respected gentleman plays Battlefield. Yeah. Because because I played Call of Duty. I did. Yeah. I played up to Black Ops. Oh, because here's... So I played almost regularly. Do you want to talk about Call of Duty a little bit? Let's like, get into it. I feel like we, we haven't, really. Here's, here's how Call of Duty works for me, guys. I never played any of them before four, and maybe that's sacrilege. That's on, what I did too, and maybe that's sacrilege on my part. But I, I, don't I really think we're care. I think we're in a large majority. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, four kicked ass. I'm gonna come right out and say it. Four was awesome. And uh, you know what? Uh, that's not why should I even be mad about you saying that? No, four was great. It was. It had a surprisingly decent story. Uh, Everyone knows it. Yeah. Everyone knows it. I was all around a great game. I'm, I'm trying to be like the preacher guy. Yeah. Say it, brother. Oh, tell us. Ah, <laughs> oh, man. Uh, then you had World at War, because what happened excellent. was they switched off between uh, Infinity Ward, who does the Modern Warfare series, and Treyarch, who's done the like Black Ops series, essentially. Mm-hmm. So you had then World at War, which right. was also a great game, because it had Gary Oldman. It's I always say the best World War II shooter to date. Uh, no, you can't beat You just can't beat it. Uh, okay, guys, don't write in about that one. Who's like, Red Orchestra 2, or some other thing. Guys, it's the most enjoyable and sweet game about World War II, shooter-wise. <laughs> Then you had Modern Warfare 2. Also, the multiplayer was great. Sorry, go on. The multiplayer was great. Then you had Modern Warfare 2. Which less I also, good. I also have a million hours in. Yeah, I have a lot, I have a lot of hours in. I probably Even have the most, you have hours in it, which is crazy. I probably have the most amount of hours in World of War, honestly. Really? Yeah. I, I, I was, uh, I think, second or third prestige. Because I had the PPSH, and I was PPSH in World yeah, of War. I had that, t- I had I had max level in World of War. <laughs> I also had, uh, I think I was second prestige in Modern Warfare 2. Mm. But yeah, that's played a game a lot, I played guys. a lot. That's a game I played a lot. Um, they're fun, addictive shooters. Yeah, uh, two was good. It wasn't as good as one, but I like the refinements they made to. Two is probably your golden age of multiplayer. I'd say. The me playing multiplayer? No, I meant inge- it's probably the best multiplayer that they released. Yeah. Well, they. Refined- I know some people. I know some people wouldn't agree with that. They find it even further in Black Ops, but, but for I some feel reason like I, didn't, no, it didn't I think take it was, as hard. No, I think for what what happened was. Uh, they did too much fine tuning with it. Maybe and I think it kind of took it a little too far. I think you still have a community in Mon- in Black Ops, though. Yeah, abs- well, absolutely. Like whereas you wouldn't have a community anymore with you, you might have less a community in th- uh, three, honestly. Yeah, because I think probably people stuck with two pretty hard. Because I I recall three kind of uh, being a dud. I feel like less. that's true. Although I think it was the most selling game of all time. Well, yeah, but I feel like <laughs> in it, yes, but that's still a dud. Yeah, it's still a dud. Uh, guys, uh, I didn't play Modern Warfare 3. I, gotta I be, didn't either. I just had no interest. No, I don't care about that. Uh, I'll tell you, though, I am very excited for Black Ops 2. 
for some reason, isn't that weird? Because nobody cares about Matt, uh, Mario Kart three, but uh, I'm pumped about Black Ops two also. Black Ops because Black Ops just had a, I think it just had a better story. Now we're gonna come out from an unpopular position. Uh, we like Treyarch uh, Call of Duty's more. Yeah, that's all. This, I, I think you'd find a lot of people who agree with that. I think it's the unpopular thing because everyone's like Modern Warfare two. That's the best. Modern Warfare two is very good. Modern Warfare two is there's no there's nothing wrong with it. No, it's extremely good. Um, it's just addictive shooters on purpose. Yeah, but so is so is Battlefield to a degree. The, I feel a little less, less so. No, they're both addictive, but Battlefield's a little less uh, fast paced. True. That's the only difference there. But yeah, uh, yeah, looking forward to Black Ops. That's gonna be really cool, guys. It's gonna be super duper cool. Super duper. And all I want to talk about Battlefield Three was that I'm pumped about AC 130s That's literally it. You also loved Bad Company a lot. Oh yeah, Bad Company too. I played for uh, as long as I could because that was the first game where you got um, shotgun slug. Eight seventy was sh- uh, slugs. Yeah. Which was basically hunting. By the way, I just recently got that again for Battlefield Three, shotgun slugs and um, Battlefield Three. Thing about Three is uh, you get a lot of uh, customizations. Yeah, and you get the uh, eight seventy with shotgun slugs, and it's awesome. No, I think that's that's probably the biggest take back or detriment to a uh, World at War or Modern Warfare One is that the very strict leveling system. Yeah, you're like. Oh, I got level sixty five and I got a new sniper rifle. Too bad I'm a I'm an assault man. Yeah, that's not. I don't the case. care about this at all. Not the case with Battlefield though, because they nailed it. Yeah, nailed it. Yeah. I was about to say one other thing. I forgot what it was. Um, well, I, I beg you to remember, sir. I don't think I'm going to. Fair enough. Wait, no. Oh, it's something that didn't really matter. I saw someone recently in a game who had uh, the Dow twelve. Yeah. With uh, slugs and a rifle scope on it. And he was just in a corner, he was like, poof, 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 and it was totally sweet. That would be sweet. No, it was sweet. Now that's all I want to do. John's like, don't do it. That sucks. I'm like, I don't care. That's awesome. It's so cool, it's though. It's like a giant revolving shotgun hunting rifle. A lot of words in there. Guys, let's move on to plugs. Plugs. Guys, you've been doing great. Do you want to do a plug song this No, time? I can't do it. Do you, want, do you want me to do one while you try and remember yeah, I'll, I'll all the do plugs? It. I'll do it. You, you got to remember to say comment and rate. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> do yourselves a favor. Go to that YouTube page. Look at those <laughs> Let's Plays. They're all great. <laughs> Each one's funny, except sometimes when they're not, but that's all right. You still love us anyway. Uh, you're definitely going to want to comment on the videos. Subscribe to us. Tell all your friends to subscribe to us. And uh, that would get our numbers up a lot, which would be great. Uh, also, check out, don't be afraid to email us, uh, sonsofidia at gmail.com. We loved hearing for you. We really love the feedback on iTunes. If you're listening to this podcast, find us, rate us, write us comments because it really helps us out, helps us get our numbers out, helps us get us a lot more subscribers and whatnot. And finally, check out that blog because I'm writing all the articles sometimes, occasionally. Uh, but yeah, the articles are great. Uh, sonsofidiot.blogspot.com everything will be great and you guys will love it and we appreciate all the support I couldn't have done it I don't know how you did it that's because I wasn't I, you didn't, weren't doing funny words that I did yeah like I threw the word plugs in there a lot now we all know you're better at funny words you're better at speaking but you know what we're equal on Speed, Speed reviews. reviews. This, this list is, is uh, top 10 list games of the top 10 more amazing games you wouldn't normally hear about. Bad title. Anyway, uh, number one, Connect Disneyland Adventures. No, what are you talking about? Yeah, I'm sure that's a real on. hidden gem. Act Razor for Super NES. Uh, this game is about how you have to ma- raise a kid to be an actor. It's pretty hardcore. 10 out of 10. Uh, Pokemon Trading Card Game 2 for the Game Boy Color. Uh, this game, you play poker with all your Pokemons, and you gotta get your royal flushes, and you take home the million dollar bucket prize. Uh, uh, seven, seven, sevens out of ten. Uh, Tom, anticipation for NES. Anticipation, um, it's making me wait. Seven out of ten. Uh, New Horizons. Uh, well, you saw those first Horizons, you thought they were pretty great, but then you saw some other Horizons, and you thought, I'm gonna check those out, so that gets a five out of ten. Uh, Tom, Pac-Man World 2. Pac-Man World 2 is Wayne's World, but acted out by Pac-Man, so 1 out of 10. Metropolis, Metropolis, Metropolis Mania 2. Uh, Metropolis Mania 2, uh, this is a guy where you're, uh, you're afraid of cities, and they drive you insane, and there are so many cities all around you that you have no idea what's even going on. Tom, check, wait, hold on, stop the speed reviews. What? Everyone, stop the speed review. What? Chex Quest 3? They made a Chex Quest 3? I didn't know this. Guys, I was thinking about talking about Chex Quest this entire episode. No joke. I love Chex Quest so much. Why did they make a third one? I only played the first two. 
Maybe it's uh There's not even pictures of it. 2008. No, that's right. It's a fan it's a fan made things. Oh, oh boy. Guys, go find copies of Chex Quest cuz that's such a fun game. Oh, you might man. think a game that revolves around a breakfast cereal that's <laughs> basically a Doom clone isn't fun, but boy do I love Chex Quest. I Oh. That seems awful. It seemed until 2008. Yeah, that's there was a dude, people loved that game. I'm not the only one. That's crazy. Uh anyway, Anyway, return to the speed reviews. Uh, Tom, cloning Clyde for the 360. Come on, man. There's no hidden gems in the 360. It's on arcade, probably. Who cares? No. Zero out of ten. Cross Country USA. Uh, this one's the have- APL2? Uh, it's for the Animal Planet 2. It's a high def channel, and you get to watch all of the Meerkats. Who I wrote this away. list? <laughs> America. Anyway, I got it, guys. <laughs> you didn't give it a number rating. Oh, uh, it's great out of ten. Great, great. We Seriously, did it, guys. Text quest. Holy crap. Text quest. All uh, right, see you guys later. See you guys next week. <laughs>